get ready to see how easy it is to make beautiful home decor using items from Dollar Tree, Target Dollar Spot, and the Cricut Joy. Now, if you got gifted a Cricut for Christmas or you've had one sitting around in your closet and you're just too intimidated to open it up, you guys, these were so easy and this video is for you. And as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hi guys, it's Aneka and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. So today I have some wall decor ideas for you. Now these are all DIY, handmade, but I think they look really beautiful. They fit right into that kind of modern farmhouse, boho type of feel if that's what you have going in your home and they're really easy to customize. So really you could change up the colors, change up the kind of shape of things and have them look like they fit right into your decor at home. So I really hope you enjoy them. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Everyone hit that notification bell so you'll be ready when my next video comes out. And when it's over, head down to the comments and let me know which DIY was your favorite. Or of course, as always, you can just say hi and let me know how you're doing. Also, don't forget to find me on all my social media platforms. Let me see what you're working on, what beauty you're putting into the world. I would love to see it. I also wanted to give a special shout out to today's sponsor, which is Cricut. Now I have been having a ball <laughs> making decor items for my new home. And I love that when I do it with the Cricut, one, it's much faster. It looks much more professional. And if I have an idea, the Joy, which is the machine that I have, is so easy to just pop out, kind of play with it, put some things together, and then stick it right back on the shelf. And it has just been so much fun to play with. So all of the supplies that I'm using today, I will leave a link to down in the description box. So be sure to check it out. Also, I do try to keep an eye out for deals for you guys. So be sure you subscribe to my channel and check the community tab every now and then because if they're having a big sale, I always try to let you guys know. Okay, guys, it's time to craft. Okay, so I'm going to start out with this frame that I got from Dollar Tree. Now they have different sizes. You can scale this project up or down, but I'm using this large frame that I found and it's the perfect size for what I need. I'm going to remove the backing and then I'm going to use this butcher paper that I had from Christmas time when I wrapped presents with it. And I'm just going to use the glass to go ahead and trace out the size of the frame so that I can put the butcher paper in and it will fit perfectly. Next, I'm going to hop over to Cricut Design Space to find my graphics. Now, once I have it opened up, I'm going to go to images and I wanted to use a picture of a monstera leaf. So I typed in monstera, I typed in tropical plants. I just looked around until I found what I wanted. I really liked this one, so I went ahead and dropped it in and then I duplicated it a few times and made it smaller so that I would have a little variation in sizing. Now, if you are brand new to Cricut and you haven't even opened up design space yet you guys this is so easy I do have a video I'll link down below showing you how to do that but for now I'm just going to show you how I designed my projects and printed them out once you have everything you need you're just going to go to make it and you're going to follow the directions and design space will tell you everything you need to know one thing I love is that it even makes sure you have enough vinyl <laughs> before you start because knowing me I would start and then like run out in the middle so I'm going to use this glossy white and also this matte black for this project so I'm going to put it in it's going to tell me I have enough vinyl to complete this project and then I'm going to click go and there we go it's going to cut out everything I need and this is the most satisfying part I don't know why but I am so mesmerized by watching the Cricut cut out shapes it's really cool and satisfying now once it's done cutting it's just going to go ahead and put your smart materials out and you'll tell the computer that you're done with the project you'll remove your vinyl and we're ready to put it on our home decor it's that easy now for this project i went ahead and cut 
three Monsteras in the gloss white and three in the black. And I wanted them to look a little bit different between the two colors. So for the white, I'm going to go ahead and weed the materials the way I normally would. The Cricut cut out kind of the outline of the Monstera, so I'm going to just take out everything that was not meant to be in the pattern. And once I have that done with all three of them, I have three beautiful Monstera leaves that I can put on my project. Now to add variation for the black, I want to remove the opposite. Now the stem is connected, so I'm just going to use my weeding tool and just draw a little line and this cut the vinyl for me so that I could keep the bottom the way it was meant to be with the outline there. I'm going to remove the outside vinyl from the Monstera and then instead of weeding out all that interior part and leaving the outline like I did on the white, I'm going to actually remove the outline on this black one. So this is going to kind of give me a reverse image and everything except the outline will be left for all of my black leaves. I thought this gave it a really cool look and it made it so that when I had my final project, you could really tell a difference there was a lot of contrast and it was just a neat visual interest point to look at on this piece of wall art Once I had everything weeded, I was ready to put it onto my butcher paper. Now I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted everything, so I just kind of laid it out to get a general idea of where things would go. But the cool thing about projects like this is they really do have an abstract quality to them and you really can't go wrong. Any way you put it, it's gonna look really great. So now I'm gonna use my Cricut transfer tape and I'm going to use my tool to go ahead and just press all over the vinyl. And I have found also that it really helps to press that transfer tape right in front of the vinyl. So once you start trying to peel this off, you might see that some of the pieces don't kind of lift up as easily. And what I do is I just rub right in front, not on the vinyl, but on the tape in front of it. And that gives it enough adherence to pull up my image with it and this is a trick that took me a while to figure out and it saved me a lot of frustration once I figured that out to rub the tape right in front of my image instead of right on my image so if you're ever stuck that's one thing that you can try so I'm gonna peel it right off and then I'm going to generally stick it in the place where I decided I wanted it and once I give it another little rub to make sure that my vinyl is nice and smooth, I'm just gonna remove that transfer tape and I have a beautiful image right onto my butcher paper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this process for all the rest of my leaves. And when I'm done, I'm gonna have a beautiful work of art. Now all that's done is to return my art to the frame. So I'm gonna put the glass into the frame first and then my butcher paper with my design on it and the backing and that's it. Now you can use this as inspiration to use on any type of materials. You can use a picture frame like I've done. You can do a wood sign where I actually saw a cutting board at Ikea that kind of had that natural look to it. And I think these would look really nice on that. I actually might do that <laughs> in a future video, but I think these came out beautifully and they were so easy for beginner Cricut users. Now for the next DIY, I'm going to be using these signs that I got from the Target Dollar Spot at Christmas time. Now they have these all year long, you guys. So even though it's not Christmas time anymore, you'll be able to find some there. I used one side already in a previous DIY, but winter is over and it's time for me to go ahead and repurpose these signs. I love these because they're really heavy. They're a little heavier than the ones you get at Dollar Tree. They have this nice wood frame and they really do make for wonderful DIYs.
So I'm going to go ahead and use some painter's tape to tape off the edges of the wood frame. And then I'm going to use this Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the middle of the signs. Now, I like to do kind of a linen look because I love the texture that that gives. And all I do um, to achieve that look is to paint in one direction with my chalk paint. I use a blow dryer so that I can dry faster. And I also use a smaller paintbrush to get into those corners. The next coat I'm going to go horizontally so that you can see the brush strokes of this horizontal coat and that first vertical coat. And then I'm going to do that whole process one more time. So this took about three to four coats, but the brush strokes going in opposite directions ends up drying and making it look like linen, which I think is a really cool way to add some texture to your DIYs. Now you're going to want to make sure that this dries completely before we start using our Cricut and putting the vinyl on it. Otherwise you will pull up your paint and you won't be very happy at that point. I love pulling painter's tape off of projects. I don't know if I'm weird or what, but this is so satisfying and I love it. <laughs> Now for this DIY, I'm also going to be using this moss colored paint. I got these little, um, I don't know what you call these circle brushes, but I'm going to be doing some stippling and I got these from the Dollar Tree. So they're perfect for projects like this because they're already in the shape of a circle. Now I'm going to dip into my paint, but I don't want too much paint on my sponge. So I'm going to use a paper towel, get off any excess paint and just take my time with layering on the paint and going in kind of a rounded square, whatever shape you'd like. Now, if you're into more of a modern look than this, you can go ahead and just paint a shape that's kind of solid on there. I love the natural look of this and it actually reminded me of the beach so kind of like a nautical um, farmhouse look so I wanted to go with this. Next I cut out those same Monstera leaves but this time I use this gold vital and I am in love with this stuff you guys. It's so pretty, it's so sparkly and it really gives a special touch to your projects. I used the same process to print them out and then I just went ahead and adhered them to my project. Now, when I looked up tropical leaves in Design Space, I also found some other tropical leaves that I thought would look really good as a set with these Monstera leaves. So on my second um, frame, I went ahead and put a different pattern on there. And I think that made it look really cool. It made it look like a set without being too matchy matchy. Next up, some refrigerator magnets. Now these are small, but I love the art shape on them. And honestly, I thought I was gonna be able to just take them apart because I got them from Dollar Tree, but these are solid, you guys. And I wasn't able to take them out um, apart and slip the picture out. So what I ended up doing was just painting the middle with that same plaster colored chalk paint. And I wasn't sure whether it would be smarter to paint the outside or the inside first, but I ended up painting the inside and I think that was the right move because then it was really easy to kind of paint over my mistakes when I did the outside. So I went ahead and painted the inside with about three coats of this chalk paint and that was able to cover the image rather nicely. Now I love this art shape lately. I've been seeing it a lot in a lot of modern farmhouse and boho decor. I love those arched mirrors. They're really pretty and this really reminded me of them. So if you have that kind of vibe going in your home, this is the perfect DIY for you. Now, in the process of trying to dry my paint, I did figure out that I can take this front foil off with a little heat from the blow dryer to melt the adhesive. So the first one, I just kind of accidentally noticed that it was rising a little bit, tried to take it off and it kind of peeled off, kind of didn't. For the second one, I kind of put the blow dryer on for just a few moments thinking it would release really easily like most of the tags at Dollar Tree um, release off of their items. However, that didn't work out like I thought it would and it kind of peeled off a little better but still not perfect. So third time's a charm. I put the heat really close to my little magnet. I left it there for a full minute or two and it pulled off really clean and easily. So 
you know, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Especially if you're going to paint this and you want it to be really smooth, that's the easiest way to get it so that there's no paper there that you're then going to have to sand off and just, you know, do some extra steps to get it nice and smooth. So now I was ready to paint and I wanted kind of like a terracotta color. So I pulled out this pot. It's one of the Dollar Tree pots. So it's a lighter terracotta than a lot of the other ones that I have in my house. And for it, I'm going to use this hazelnut colored chalk paint. And I also had some of this orange um, acrylic paint. I think it's called Hot Saffron. I just got that from Walmart for about 50 cents. And I'm just going to kind of mix and add and mix and add. I also ended up with a darker brown acrylic paint that I had on hand that I just added a few drops in there as well until I got a color that I really liked. Next, I'm going to use some painter's tape to tape off that inside arch to make sure that my white paint stays nice and clean. And then I decided to add a little texture to the paint. Now you guys know I love this trick of adding a little bit of baking soda into my paint. You're just going to keep adding until it's nice and thick. And you're going to want to play around with this. You might want it a little thinner for some projects and really chunky for others. For this one, I wanted it pretty thick. So I kept adding and mixing until it was thick enough that the paint didn't even fall off of my paintbrush when I took it out of the cup. Next, I'm just going to take this sponge and go ahead and dab my thickened paint all over the arch. Now what this did was it gave it the texture like stone and along with this terracotta color, I really think it just brought this kind of arch shape to life and made it look really beautiful and definitely does not look like a Dollar Tree magnet. Next, I'm going to pop back over to design space and I wanted to put some cute little succulents into these magnets. I wasn't sure if I was going to maybe use them as like little fillers for a tiered tray or use them as actual magnets on my refrigerator, but I knew I wanted them to have kind of more of a cutesy look than the Monstera leaves that I put on the other ones. So I chose these hand-drawn succulent pictures and I just wanted to show you guys a little trick. If you're new to using Cricut, this might be something that you don't know yet. Now some of the pictures come with layers and they have different colors in them. I'm just going to go ahead and one by one pick the different layers and delete them. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take out any of the layers that would have been cut by the Cricut and it's just going to leave this outline of the succulent for me to put on my project, which is what I did. I just wanted a nice simple look with a cute little cactus and that's what I got. I think these are adorable and I'm actually planning to make more for gifts. I know a few people who would be all into these and they were so easy to make. Okay, so this is one of those weeks where I legitimately cannot choose a favorite. I love each and every one of those DIYs for different reasons. I love kind of the big Monstera leaves on that black and white one. I love that gold vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, I just love how kind of shimmery and foily it looks. And then those magnets are just so adorable. I, I know we're going to get a lot of use out of those. And I'm actually thinking of making more to gift because I know a few people who would find those really cute. But make sure you head down to the comments and let me know which one is your favorite. So keeping with kind of the plant theme, <laughs> I decided to do a little experiment and make a little edible plant. And I think it came out so cute. Now you guys, I am not a professional pastry chef. I am just a mom who likes making cute things for her kids. And I have got to tell you like, this one was adorable and will definitely be getting made the next time we have people come over. So it's time to eat. To start off this project, I'm just going to take this plastic bag and some graham crackers and I'm just going to crush them all inside. Now, if you have Oreos, you could put those in a food processor or you can use the chocolate graham crackers. Those kind of brown colors will make it look more like dirt. Since I was kind of in the mood and thinking about succulents, I decided to make mine look like sand. So I used this graham cracker to make my project.
Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and grab one of the little mini pots that I got from Dollar Tree. These come in a pack of three, so if you're doing this for a party, these, this would actually be a really cost-effective and cute way to present this treat. Now I'm going to use some saran wrap and I'm going to put a little bit in the bottom because I needed a little bit of height for my treat and I'm going to put the rest around the sides because this pot is not food safe and I didn't want it to be touching. Next I got this box of ho-hos and I'm just going to open one up and put it right inside of the saran wrap making sure that it's not touching the sides and that it's standing up nice and securely. Now I'm going to grab my sand that I made out of graham crackers and I'm just going to put it all around the outside of my ho-ho, making sure to cover up all of the um, saran wrap so that you can't see it when you look at the treat. Now you can make your own icing if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and use this pre-packaged green icing. It already comes with a star tip on it, which is perfect for what I need to do. And this is about at room temperature, so when I use the star tip, put a little bit of icing and pull away, it makes these little spikies. Now if you want to stick this in the fridge just for a few moments and get the icing slightly harder, you're going to get kind of shorter spikies if you want to make it look like a cactus. But mine ended up looking like the most adorable little succulent I've ever seen. I think this came out really cute. It was really easy to make and actually pretty cost effective. I could have made probably about 10 out of them with that one package of icing. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed all the DIYs I had for you. Don't forget to head down to the description box and check out all the links to the Cricut products that I had to use in today's video. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to let me know which DIY was your favorite. And I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.